Hey, we're live. Oh, that was pretty quick this oh. time. Hey, I was waiting for it to usually take do the countdown, and I guess this new interface is so much nicer and faster. Sweet. So, um, I was almost ready for this, guys. So, here we are. This is Android Coliseum's Sunday afternoon hangouts, uh, the evolution of our Friday evening hangouts. Um, and this is number 53, which we're going to... Uh, semi-officially call the one-year anniversary, seeing as, you know, Tom and I and Cass and Mark are all here, sort of the four people that started the whole thing when we, we did Android Coliseum. Um, we're just missing Sylvain, so hopefully Sylvain will start being able to come back uh, with his uh, work schedule. He's a little busy. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, I didn't get a chance to share this out. Everyone want to just quickly do a share-out on, on our Google Plus that we're live now, so you can do that. Anyways, it's um, November the 3rd here, so those of you who've ever followed uh, Daylight Savings Times, this is, we had our, everybody's had their extra hour of uh, sleeping in or doing whatever it is they needed to get done. Every, everybody here has, is under Daylight Savings Time, right? Yeah. Or now no longer under it, I guess you could say. So what did you guys do with your extra hour today? I uh, slept and took my kid to McDonald's and uh, breakfast and let him play around them in the little kitty park there. <laughs> oh, I, I, I did I, that. <laughs> <laughs> Went for my Sunday Sunday run. Sunday run? This time an hour earlier, roughly. I went to the, went to the library. It's an interesting yeah. place to go downtown earlier in the morning. Did your internet die, Ryan? Pardon? Did your internet die? No. I, am I dead? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have the internet, oh. what good is the library? <laughs> oh, no, it's for my kid. We went down there. To I know, I know, I'm playing. So, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, anyways, here we are, uh, number 53. I can't believe, you know, a little over a year ago we, we started doing these, and uh, here we are now, uh, 52 of them later, and continue on. So let's introduce and make sure everybody knows who we are. My name is Ryan, uh, one of the writers here at the Android Coliseum. Uh, you can follow me on Google Plus. I still don't have my vanity URL, so I'll learn on that. Uh, so you can follow me at Google Plus or Google.com slash Marcus Duca. <laughs> I have one. It's gplus.to slash Ryan Moore. You can go to that one. That's my uh, fake vanity URL. Uh, so that's Mark Stuka who has his vanity URL. We also okay. have Tom Gray. Hey guys, Tom here. So uh, Mark Lestuka, his last name is very hard to spell. Mine's very easy. It's just G R A Y. So is it G R A Y or is it G R E Y? A Y, not the color, <laughs> the uh, the Scottish last name. So yeah, Google.com/slash/plus/tom-gray, and you'll find me and my team of Android Coliseum guys here. And uh, yeah, it's a great thing. I mean, I have to wag my finger at Google. I mean, Ryan's got over thirty thousand followers. Why the hell does he not have a vanity URL yet? And we got some guys like 5,000 followers and got theirs. It doesn't make sense. Get on your game, Google. I wag the thing about you. You're not going to like this, Ryan. My wife has hers. I, I know. You've, you've told me. But we're not rubbing it in or anything. Oh, no, no. The salt in that wound is already pretty salty. Don't worry about mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've had I, I see people with like a hundred followers who have theirs, and I have no idea how it is. I thought it was just a I'm from small town Thunder Bay, but no, it's I've had people who are in Kenora, smaller towns that have had theirs. I have people who I know who have like those fake names, uh, like uh, the oh, whatever. It's yeah, it's dumb. Anyways, let's move it along. So Tom, Tom Gray. Now I can always forget is Gray the with the A, the Canadian or, or British spelling versus the E? I can't, the G-R-A-Y is the, the actual British. Scotland, Scottish spelling of the name. And that's actually where my name and my family comes from, is Scotland. All right, cause I, can't remember, cause I always remember like growing up as a kid, I had a friend who had a, uh, an American mom, and we watched The Blue and the Gray, if you remember the TV series from way back when, The Blue and the Gray from the Civil War. And the gray was spelled with an E or an A, and I, I, mean, I spelled it wrong, and she was she corrected me on it. So now Anyways. E is how you with an E is how you spell the color. Yes, in so you can spell the color and in the EU. Yeah, in, okay. in the UK. But in the gray states, they spell it. There's a lot of dyslexic um, people around yeah. there because 
I've been called Tom Gary a few times, and I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got two first names. Uh, okay, so and last but not least, we have Cass Morrison, who I think also has... I have my vanity. I have my vanity URL, too. I'm at plus Cass Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> and I live in a smaller town than you, and I have only a couple thousand followers. So. Yes, but Cass, unlike any other member of Android Coliseum, she has the looks. She has the vanity. Oh, sure. So she needs the URL. <laughs> it, it just fits. It's the vanity thing. It's the vanity. I have to give her credit. <laughs> She's Louise. One of these days. So I'm just going to share out uh, on our Google Plus thing here. And uh, do let's... Uh, Let's take a look back here. Uh, Tom, walk us through. We want to talk about not only a year of us for us has gone by, but you know, over five years now for Android and where have they really come from. I know you and I talked about this last night, so I'll let you take the first uh, topic there, Tom. Yeah, so, I mean, you and I, we got together way, way back from Android in Canada, where you and I met, and, I mean, I feel like almost like a brothership has formed. And then now we got, you know, Cass and uh, Mark, and Martin just joined us, Sylvain, it's just... Our family is growing, and I couldn't be happier with the team that we got. We're not the biggest blog, but, I mean, the community is tight, and I really like that. Um, taking a look back at where, where we started, I mean, I, I bounced around from BlackBerry and iPhone and Windows Phone, and now I have found a home in Android. And what I really want to talk about and ask you guys the questions is, what inspired you to go for Android? What was that first magical device? I'm not asking for your first device. I'm asking you for the first Android device that really wowed you and made you feel that this is where I belong and this is the phone that really sold me on Google's Android platform. So go ahead, guys. You know, Tell me your device. We'll start off with Cass. What device really, really inspired you to say, I want to be with Android? Well, you know, I did get on with a, the original Galaxy S, when I saw my sister-in-law's, and I've been on Android for a few years now, although it seems like longer, but I have to say, actually, the device that makes me sit there and say, this is where I'm staying, is my S4, and I know that seems like a long time coming, but I feel that the platform has now matured enough that, that it's just like, regardless of what kind of phone you get, you'll be able to pick it up. Is my audio choppy, Mark, or everybody's? No, Mark, I think Mark said his was choppy. You're just fine, oh, okay. Cass. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say my S4. Like, really, with all the chat about new, new um, phones coming out and stuff like that, it's finally Google has matured Android enough that my S4 is the one that did it for me. Nice. And Ryan, how about you? Or sorry, I'm Mark. Mark, don't get Mark. You get yeah. mad. The first, I mean, first one that I got was the Nexus S. But what I really, what really wanted me to get there was the um, the Desire Z. I was like, oh, I had to have the Desire Z, and I looked around everywhere to try and get it, and I ended up not getting it. But it was just the idea of having that that flop out keyboard and having that, you know, because I had, I was on an iPhone before, right? So having that flip out keyboard was really, I thought, was really neat. And um, but you know, now I'm. You know, it's because of all the different options. There's actually anyone can have what they want, which is what I kind of really love about it. I can really shop around and see what I want. All right, right. Uh, I mean, I want to say for me, it was the first device. Like, I actually, my first device. I remember debating heavily between the HTC Dream or the HTC Magic, and the keyboard didn't really turn me on. So I remember going to the Magic and thinking. Because I was wow, because I came from Palm and I couldn't believe the the, the step up from Palm it went. Um, but like anything that really that makes you that you make sure you really want to stay on something, it's it's that next iteration, right? So the next device you get after your first, and for me that was the Captivate. I remember my wife got the Acer Liquid E, and I remember going, "Holy smokes, hers has so much more power, more space." That's cool. I, I want to get that. And then when I got my Captivate, I was like, "Wow, one gigahertz processor! Like, I'll never have to you know store anything on this this storage you know, the micro SD card again." And I can't believe how fast and how sleek and so thin this was. The hardware was really good. The the uh, the device had really kind of really moved up enough that I, I was like, "This is it!" Like, I, I really 
you know, you, you you tried out that first year on the HTC Magic to see if this is the switch for me because after being like six seven years on Palm, it was really kind of hard to determine whether I was going to be on Android or not because I got a temp I just use a temporary uh, Gmail account and then but it's yeah it stayed for me it was that Magic or the Captivate. Hey buddy. All right, and for me. Unfortunately, it wasn't my first device that really sold me on Android. In fact, my first device pushed me away from Android. And my first device was the uh, Galaxy S Fascinate from Talus. And it was a variant of the S1. And it was a flop of a phone, which I didn't know because it was my entry device into Android. And it was su such a bad phone that you had to root it and run a uh, thing called a lag fix to make the phone usable. And what would happen is you'd be using your device, and like Ryan said, 1 gigahertz, you know, 16 gigs of internal storage. Wow, amazing, right? And so you're using the email, you're browsing through at blazing fast speeds, and all of a sudden it hangs. Three seconds, your device is frozen. And all of a sudden it comes to life again. And all your touches go, hey, it's not working, it's not working. All of a sudden, all these touches just all hit the phone at the same time, so you're email opens up, slides sideways, delays, you put a star on it, all at the same time, like, well, what the hell? So you hit back, it's not working. All of a sudden it goes back seven times. And it was just a horrible device. I sold it and I went back to iPhone and I waited in an eight hour lineup at the Apple store to get my iPhone 4. I was one of those guys, first time I ever did it. Um, so the device that really brought me back to Android is I tried again with the HTC Desire, the very first one. And they had that little, uh, almost like a trackball, but it was almost like a touch-sensitive little pad they had there. And they had the uh, the buttons like uh, on the bottom of the chin, and they had like as a four-point, no, it was a three-point-seven-inch display, which is a little bit bigger than the iPhone. And that was the icing on the cake. And they just released Gingerbread at that time, which really made Android great. Was when it started with Gingerbread. So that was my entry level. But adding on to that and continuing on the motion with this was what has inspired Android to grow to now we're just getting 4.4, what are the features that really brought Android and the stepping stones to get us to where we are today? I mean, obviously cameras are the leading thing for phones right now. For some reason, cameras were like, ah, oh, whatever. But now there's such high demand. And I have to give credit to Samsung for releasing amazing cameras, probably the best cameras I've ever seen on a mobile phone. And now we've got curved glass coming out, and then LED lights was the huge thing. I want an LED light on my phone. So let's start back with Cass again. What kind of your favorite features of all the Androids that really stood out to you? Was it the S Pen? Was it the curved screens or AMOLEDs? What really got you with the, all the new features Androids coming out with? I'm going to say the phone. Oh, sorry, I'm going I'm to say the camera because... When I was on Palm a long time ago, uh, you know, I was happy with my PDA, and when they started bringing out cameras with them, I thought, why would you want a camera with that? And gradually over time, really, if you look at my Google Plus uh, feed, or, you know, really, I want to take pictures and share them with people. And I want to take pictures that turn out crisp and focused. I don't want to have to dick around with them and hide them with filters and stuff like that. Right. And that's why I will never probably go with the Nexus phone because I want that high-end camera. And that makes perfect sense because Samsung, I have to give them credit, they, they beat the snot out of Nexus when it comes to camera qualities. Yeah, I was really disappointed when I went back to the Galaxy Nexus because I thought at least the camera quality would be the same as my SG-1. Mm -hmm. But, mm -mm. No. no. So, Mark, yourself? Um, I'd say yeah, the the camera um, on my Z1 is really awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, blowout features, I guess. The camera. You're going to show off to your friends. If you have an iPhone friend, what is the biggest best feature that you're going to show off to make him jealous that you have an Android and he doesn't? I don't have any Google iPhone now. friends. <laughs> Google Now, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ryan, yourself? Uh, yeah, I, I think I like 
like Mark is saying, I think it's Google Now is like a show off to them. Um, but iOS people have Google Now as well. They have Google Now as well, but just the way that you can get into it, you just you mm. just swipe up to get into it. The way that and the fact that I can make it how I want it, like the like people that want to have a special ringtone or people want to have a specific background or launcher or widget, those are the cool things. Uh, I mean, for me though, what really kind of keeps me for sure on the the Android platform is it's the way I can multitask. I was going to say cloud, like the way I can do all my cloud backup and syncing, all that kind of stuff. But you can do that on the iOS. But for me, the way I can really truly multitask between devices, or between apps, and, and, and get things done on this that you really can't do, I find, on iOS. But that's just me. I see. And for me, I'd have to say it's, it's going to be probably the LED lights and the fact that the Nexus has a multicolored light that you can decide green, red, purples, pinks, whites. So you can tell who's messaged you without even grabbing your phone. I think the LED light is the single most important tool on a phone for someone who doesn't is not going to have it in their hand all the time. I see a green flashing light, that's a text. It requires importance. If I see red, it's an email, it can wait. You know what I mean? So for me, I feel an LED light is a very important tool, even though it's so simple. And that comes down to the way you customize it too, right? Because you use uh, what's that light? What is that light, light waiver? Uh, light loader to, to to just make it the way you want it. Right. Right. So, and you can do that with like your vibration sensor, right? So if you wanted to, you know, vibrate Morse code for you, if you knew Morse code, then you can do these kind of things. So, and I think it comes down to like for me, the biggest thing is that we can say that Android is is not only customizable. We have a great community that if I ever say. Hey, I have an issue. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw or follow Will Wheaton online at all. He yes. posted the other day about he's having an issue with his I, can't, I think Galaxy Nexus on CyanogenMod, and immediately he had everybody telling him how to do this, do that. The CyanogenMod, one of the guy Brent from CyanogenMod, actually was like, "You gotta try this. Let me hop on and I'll hang out and help you." I mean, sure, he's Will Wheaton, he's famous, but I mean, the same thing I've had. Anybody, I've had an issue. People are coming in and. You know, they help you out with those those, those problems. Mm -hmm. That's what I really like about Android is they have a great community of people who are willing to tinker around and show you and show you the ropes. Understood. And uh, going back on a previous post, this is the last ending comment, and we'll move on to the next one. Is the Android community has got to be careful because with the Nexus 5 release, Ryan and I both made the comment saying you're kind of starting to look like the Apple crowd when you know when you're getting angry when Google's not releasing the device when you want them to, just really watch those comments because that's what the Apple guys do. And if you don't want to be labeled as an eye sheep, you better not act like an eye sheep. So just really compose yourself and act like a professional. That is, that is my closing statement on this matter. You're telling Android, Android fans to act professional? I am. Ooh. You know, if you don't want to be called an eye sheep, don't act like an eye sheep. We, we've That's got the brains. We've obviously picked the right runner. We've got the brains. So let's just act like it. Just so I think. Anyway. Damn boy. Yeah. Anyway, let's move along here because there's so much to talk about today. I mean, I absolutely so much to talk about today. We're, we're, we're probably not going to fit it all in within an hour. Uh, hope not to go over. But Okay, so um, we were teased early on in this week with the Google Plus event. Which we, you know, Google event turns out was just a plus Google Plus event. They talked primarily about the new upgrades to Google Plus, the Google Plus app for Android, um, all the new photo features they're going to be adding, uh, the updates to Hangouts, uh, and then the cool new features about with Snapseed and the Nix software. If you guys ever used Nix software, so it was a good introduction to some of the things and got, getting us everybody ready for the Nexus, which didn't make its appearance there, but. Uh, just wanted to quickly talk about the Hangout update, and if you guys wanted to sort of chime in what you guys thought about it. So the idea now is that Hangouts now has SMS integration, and we can talk a little bit more about that in, in about Android 4.4, but the idea is that you can now have your text messages, or you can text from the Hangout app and take in uh, text messages into that. Now, the problem I have with that is that it doesn't thread my conversations together. So, for example, that if I have a conversation with my wife, you know, like we talk a couple lines in Hangout, and then we send a text message, and then we do a couple more lines of, you know, comments, doesn't do more, you know, I have to actually have two lines, and so if I'm looking for my wife, I might have the Hangouts I have up here, and then scroll all the way down, and there's the, the, the text messages uh, conversation. I was really hoping that they would be integrated, 
Uh, and I was really hoping that we would see the dial-out feature that um, uh, the iOS people have, which we don't have yet. Not so, uh, Tom, your comments? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, you're right on point. And um, all I can say is that if you agree with us and you want them to be threaded, just send feedback like like we're doing. You know, tell Google this isn't right. We would like to see it better. Make it better. You know, I mean, if no one says anything, it's not going to happen. Right. Um, as I said earlier, I think Google needs to take a lesson from Apple. Dare I say it? Um, they need to have a color coded rather than uh, having just white messages. Have like a blue background to indicate that this is a Hangout message or whatever, just so you can distinguish what's text, what's Hangout, and then thread them. And hopefully Google will correct this in future updates. They need to fix the YouTube app. You know what? And I tried that, Mark. Mine's not having that issue. <laughs> Well, like, a lot of other people are having issues. It's been the conversation. It must be something with a different type of Bluetooth. Anyways, Mark's talking about if you have um, your YouTube app up and it detects some device that it thinks it can cast to, uh, so like a smart TV or your Bluetooth headphones, it leaves that cast uh, logo on your YouTube video. And I just tried mine upstairs, and it just it wouldn't stay, like didn't come on. Like, I just turned the Bluetooth headphones on, watched the video, and it just, that was fine. Well, but some people are well, having it, some people aren't. What happens is, because I guess they want it to be fancy, so when you're, when you're, in, a, in, your, in, a, in a casting mode, they, grid, they, they dim out the screen and have the Chromecast icon on there. And, um, and it's kind of funny how it works. If you're, like, if you're in, in portrait mode and you start a video, first thing it does is if you click on a video link and you have your Bluetooth headsets connected, it pops up with that thing of play or add to TV queue or add to your TV queue or something, right? So you hit play, yeah. and then it'll play in portrait, fine. And then if you rotate to landscape, then it grays it out. And then if you rotate back to portrait, it's still grayed out with the Chromecast icon. And I guess the people up on the workaround is to, to turn to, to disable Bluetooth, and then, and then play the video, and then enable Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. But they, I've actually found on the, on the Google Groups or something, YouTube team has actually said that, that they know about this issue, and they're working on a fix. Maybe it only affects some devices, not all of them. I don't know, but I, people have said that they, 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 they roll back updates, so they roll back to an older version of YouTube and it works fine, but as soon as they update to the newest version, it does that. I, I wonder if it's a type of Bluetooth, because like, I have a, a true, it's an old Bluetooth headset I have. Well, I, I've Maybe seen it different. do. I've seen it do with a lot of things, though. Like if I'm in, if I'm on Netflix, for example, or or something, it actually will see. Like if I hit the Chromecast icon, it'll be there, even though I have a Bluetooth headset connected and nothing else. And then it'll show my Bluetooth headset as a castable device. So I'm not really sure why it's seeing a Bluetooth headset as a castable device, okay. but it is. Uh, so, anyways, let's move along here. So. Aside from the event we had on, I think it was Tuesday was the event for Google Plus to talk about photos, and a lot of people were really excited about new photos, especially Snapseed. I'm, I'm just loving that. Um, next Tuesday, there's going to be another launch, which I'm not sure I'm really allowed to say or not, but I heard it was already uh, leaked out there. But the Help Outs app will launch on, on, on Tuesday, November 5th. Um, and that's if you guys are not sh unsure what Help Outs are, the idea is that people who have signed up can offer help outs online. Uh, do a hang, basically, you do a hangout with somebody. You schedule a time to go and hang out with them, and you help them with whatever. So you make a listing. For example, I have a listing for math and science tutoring, or I have uh, bagpipe tutoring, and I'm trying to get authorized for uh, Android advice tutoring. Um, and people would go online and see who's offering different services and then schedule time with them, and you can either charge for it or offer it for free, and then use people you can sign up. And again, a way to use Hangouts to help people learn more. So look for that to happen on Tuesday, is the rumor I'm hearing. So, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, this past week, the biggest thing... I mean, I'm talking big. This, this thing had so much hype before it actually even was real. It, it eclipsed any other news story that was going out there. And then the day it renounced, there was so much news. Like, my, my Feedly was just cluttered. Uh, I look at Android Police had 44, you know, within, you know, like a six-hour period from the Nexus 5 discussion, within a 40, 44 articles just on the phone. So, yes, on October 31st, at about 11 o'clock Eastern or uh, Pacific Standard Time there, 
they had the event. Basically, it wasn't really an event. It just the Nexus Five went live on the Play Store, and people had a chance to who were in the know could go ahead and buy it, which was really cool. I mean, uh, thanks to Mark. Mark was on the ball. He had some time at work where he could should be free to sort of refresh the page that he just sat there and went like, as soon as it was live, sent us a super message, go and buy no, it. Martin was the one who mentioned it, actually. Martin Martin was the first to go through I can't remember. I was at... Yeah, because Martin was like 10, and then, I, and then I saw his post, and then I actually checked, and I saw. Uh, I, uh, I, just, I was at my kid's school that day, and it was just hilarious. I'm sitting there um, holding a phone, taking a video, and the, the blips are going off, and so as soon as the video was over, I could see, oh, it's going live, and go do it, so... Uh, Tom, I know you went and bought it. Sold out. <laughs> no, I, 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 I debated heavily for a long time. Tom, I know you bought so let's hear your, your take on this, Tom. Yeah, I think uh, I was the only member of the team that actually bought it. I think everyone was just looking out for me, which is what brings me to my little thing here. Is, uh, I, I managed to get it probably within the first two or three minutes because it didn't come out right at 11 o'clock. It was like 11.05 that it really went live, and my receipt shows 11.07. So, you know, thanks to my amazing team here that really just, they looked out for me, which was awesome, and I, I can't thank these guys enough. Um, I have my wife looking out. I know Martin, who's not here right now, he was talking to my wife as well because they've become great friends outside of the website. And um, he was telling her, and then she was updating me, and we had this giant circle of a neighborhood watch, essentially. So I know we, uh, Martin, or sorry, Mark here made a... Uh, an alert thread and basically said no one message here unless it goes live. So I muted all conversations and as soon as I heard that ping in my ear from my headphones, I knew to go hide somewhere and order it. And sure enough, 11.05 comes around and I hear ding, 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 right? My phone's just shaking like crazy. I'm like, okay, it's live. So I ran to the little corner in my paint shop and ordered it. And it was such a great experience. I clicked on the Google page. It loaded up smoothly on my phone. I clicked buy, got the wallet, pay, finished. It was that simple. No errors. No wallet giving me errors and pushing me back saying, sorry, I can't do this, try again. I ordered in about 30 seconds. And I messaged my wife saying, it's okay, it's okay, I got it, don't worry about it. And she goes, oh, well, I bought one too under your account. So now I'm like, oh, well, I guess we're getting two then. So if she's happy as she's getting an early Christmas gift. But <laughs> it was such a great experience, and I... I Google really learned a lesson. I think the only problem was they sold out way too quick. And even now, as Cass mentioned earlier, it's not sold out per se. It's back-ordered, essentially. So you can still order it, but it's not going to ship for another three weeks. And this takes the power away from the eBay guys. So they can't say, oh, you're going to spend $800 if you want this right now, because we're just going to camp it next time. So Google really took the power away from these guys, and I say, Google, amazing job this time. You really learned a lesson, and uh, well played. Uh, Mark, you had a comment? Yeah, um, it's interesting because uh, they, uh, it kind of, like even the launch wasn't announced officially, right? It was all hinted at or rumored at that it would be at 11 o'clock. There was no actual official announcement, so it's interesting that Google went the way of I'm not actually announcing it until at the time and then it went live, right? So, I mean, it's only really you have some kind of big announcement. And, and it feels like almost like they did it did it just for the the Google, like, you know, the Google fanboys and everything, where they, they released it at that time and didn't tell anyone else about it so that everyone who really cares about it will know about it. But if you don't know about it, then you're not going to be able to get it right away. I, I think Google did announce it. I think they announced it about, let's say, 44 times. And with their um, their leaks, <laughs> quote unquote. Yeah, but do uh, yeah, but do yeah, but do regular people watch leaks though? Yes, they do. Because no, I'm gonna not share everybody. It. I mean, I'm gonna share it. Mark's gonna share it. Ryan's gonna share it. Everyone's gonna share it. Everyone's gonna see it eventually. I mean, I have people at work to ask me, "Are you gonna get it?" And they barely even have internet at home. I mean, so I, uh, Google really <laughs> didn't. Google really didn't have to. Everyone did the advertising for them. And I, I don't believe these were leaks. I think these were intentional, whoopsie, you weren't supposed to see that. You know, I, it, it was a marketing ploy, and it worked. And it worked extremely well. But people at, people at my work didn't know about it. I had to tell them about it, right? Because mm. they one guy at my work who was like, you know, two hours after, three hours after he went on sale, he was like, oh, I, so I heard the Nexus 5 went on sale. And it's like, yeah, like, like three hours ago. Because <clears throat> he wasn't sitting there watching it or anything, right? 
Oh yeah, um, everybody say hi to Martin. He's watching at home. Hi, Martin. Hey, Martin. Hey, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, it was interesting to see that, yeah, it, it lasted a fair bit longer. I think there was about a 20-minute window before it sold out this time, whereas last time it was like 10, 12 minutes at max before it was sold out. So everybody got a chance to get in the first round. But I think, you know, Russell Hawley had a good point the other day that, you know, because there wasn't an event to really announce it, there was no official announcement, that only really the truly, I think, enthused about it were looking at that time. Those who weren't thinking about buying it probably weren't, following as closely as we were, that the number that were probably hammering the servers at the time weren't as great as last time, so therefore it wasn't a fluid service. I don't know. Google never really releases the, the numbers on how many buy it within that time frame. But it's interesting. I mean, I, I, I remember sitting at my, my, my son's school, and they're doing the Halloween little thing, and I was sitting there refreshing it going, still in stock. Should I buy it? Should I buy it? You know, it just it was super easy... So it was really good. So let's take a look at what's really happening about this. Um, the Nexus 5, as we know, it's a 2.3 uh, 2 gigahertz quad-core processor. comes in either 16 or 32 gigabytes of space. It had 2 gigs of RAM, a 5-inch, 4.95-inch screen. It had a ton of different stuff. I mean, it's got, it's, if you'd seen any of the leaks beforehand, you, you knew exactly what it was. It uh, has wireless charging, which was interesting. It doesn't have an infrared port, even though the G2 had it, which I was, I was hoping for. Uh, it also has a new feature called Hall Effect, which I'd never seen before, so I had to look it up. And the Hall Effect is basically a magnetic sensor, so it's going to have a smart cover option so that you can open the smart cover up and you can then it just turns your thing on. Um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff out there um, that are there for it. Now, the, I think the bigger news, instead of the device, is the fact that it, it came out with 4.4. And this is what I really feel gypped about. It. I really, really wanted to have uh, somebody talk about what is it that 4.4 has. Like right now, if you want to find out what 4.4 has, you can either read the 44 different articles on Android Police or Android Central, or you can go to the Android website. You can go to... The Play Store, you could go to the developer's page and get little snippets here and there. Um, but nobody really discussed about it. And there's a bunch of neat things. I, I mean, I did a whole article on what's, what are some of those features about it, so I try not to do 44 different articles. I try to put it all in one spot. But right now, if you want to try some features of 4.4, you can go and get the APKs. Uh, Fandroid, Derek Ross, and the guys there had you know pulled out the AOSP... Uh, Image and then just you know went to town and trying to get those uh, those devices the, the APKs out so you can try out some of the APKs like the calendar, Gmail, the AOSP AOSP email app, uh, the new Google Search Google Now. Uh, there is the Home Launcher. Um, there's a bunch of different features you can try out now if, if you want to play around with it. You know, just keep in mind that they aren't finished products for your Nexus 4, or your S4, or your HTC One. They are meant for the Nexus 5, so keep that in mind. Um, but you know, some of the cooler things I thought was, uh, for example, I remember a couple weeks ago we talked about uh, Koch showing off this screen capture for video. So if you want to show off your screen video live, uh, well, Google put that in 4.4. They, as uh, I think Renault put on, uh, out there, was that they coached Koch. You know, they beat him to the punch of his own app, kind of thing. Stealing, stealing my thunder there, Ryan. That your thunder? Yeah, Ronald reshared my post about that. Oh, he reshared your post. Okay, I, because <laughs> I, I think he res it was a was it reshared your post or were you sharing somebody else's post? Oh, okay, I, no, I I saw it in the in the um, in the developer stuff. Cool. So I mean, some cool so stuff. I screen grabbed it and shared it. That's a really cool feature. I think that that's I'm actually excited to play around with that. Because uh, I've been trying AirDroid and BBQ Screen, which are now running really, really, really laggy for me, and I can't. I have no idea why it's so bad. I really want to show off some of these apps on the show here, or do a YouTube video for it, and it just doesn't really work so well. So being able to do that built into the OS would be really cool. Yeah, normally you have to you have to have it connected to your computer, and then you can run 
screen recording from your computer, but this one it'll it, sh it should be built right into the uh, into the OS. Yeah. So uh, OEM updates, update announcements. Mark, you had a comment about that? Yeah. Um, so there's obviously with 4.4 coming out, um, everyone is jumping on board with their uh, different uh, announcements. So I can just run through the different ones here. Um, HTC said that they would be updating their the uh, the one, so the the Play Edition would get updated within 15 days, and the and their HTC One you know default one will get it within 90 days. They said. Mm -hmm. uh, Samsung they said that they would update at a later time for what the updates are going to be. So they haven't really said anything yet on what's going to get updated. Although I'd assume their major like the S4 and the Note 3 are all going to get updated. Uh, Motorola said the Moto X is going to get updated to the 4.4, and they also said, although it's not really applicable to us, but the Droid ones, Ultra Max, and everything else are going to get updated. Uh, I don't think there's been anything on LG, but I doubt. I'm sure there'll be something because it's the same, basically the same hardware. Uh, Sony has said that they will make announcements next week with the um, version 4.3 and 4.4 plans, because most of their phones are still on 4.4. So. So I'm crossing my fingers that they're just going to jump straight to 4.4 from the 4.2, but I don't know if that's really going to happen. So, well, there's a, even a couple out there, like the Samsungs, were saying they were going to leapfrog 4.2 to go to 4.3, and potentially. So I mean, and then um, other updates in terms of that, we know that the Galaxy Nexus won't get 4.4, which I thought, you know, why not? You know, there's a couple out there that are talking about the fact that the Galaxy Nexus won't get it because it uses an OMAP processor, which is an entirely different, and TI has stopped sort of support and whatnot. And I, I love Cass's uh, argument for probably why the Galaxy Nexus and the Nexus S won't get it, even though they tout that, you know, 4.4 is built for, you know, less RAM devices. Well, so why not these, you know, Galaxy S, or sorry, Nexus S and Galaxy Nexus? And Cass made the comment of, because they're Samsung, and Samsung's stepped in it lately with Apple or uh, Google lately. I don't uh, think. I don't think. You said it jokingly. That specifically, but I really think that the reason I really think that is is because um, is because Google doesn't update all the Samsung devices for the Galaxy Nexus. Like, they didn't update the Canadian one. So it's really hard for them to push if they still have to go through Samsung that now is the perfect time to drop. It's two years old. Yeah, I remember Nexus S and the Galaxy Nexus had those two different builds, a Yakju build and a Yakju UX build. Mm -hmm. The Taku uh, different, and... Different, yeah, the Taku builds. And so the idea that I think... And plus, it's, they also said it's an 18-month uh, support window. Yeah. Which they, don't have to, they, they don't have to support it after 18 months, right? Well, that's sort of... It's an unwritten rule, but they, they sort of fall... But no, it's, it's a written it, rule, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is, is it a written down? rule. 18, written rule. 18 months. But like, if you take a look at it, though... Uh, I think Derek Ross pointed out that technically it got 4.3, which was 20 months after it was released. So they, they went two yeah, months over the line. Even needed to, it shouldn't even gotten the 4.3 release, but it did. So yeah. So Galaxy Nexus owners stop complaining. <laughs> or you know what? Go to go to or New York. Or get Cuba. something new. Yeah, get a new phone. <laughs> okay, Tom, you had a comment question about that. Yeah, I'm actually rolling back a little further than that, though. I'm going back to the APKs uh, that are for test. Uh, for a guy like me, I'm also talking to Terry Cameron about this on our, on our live chat channel. Um, the APKs for a guy like me, I'm running my Moto X, I'm not rooted. What APKs can I use, and what ones are limited to a rooted device only? You can use any of them, actually, if you're not rooted. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, but the whole launch need, will crash though. You you just need to be you just need to be um, not rooted. You just need to be able to uh, sideload a APK. So I, I you turn on that uh, that setting in security where you're allowed to sideload non Play yep. Store APKs. Turn yep. that on and put it in, and then just you'll be fine. The only issue you, you really run into, I find, is uh, if you want the home launcher, you have to have search. You can have search without the home launcher, but you have to have the launch. Mark and I had a long discussion about this. Mark uh, you know, coming up with the idea that, that true enough, that actually the home launcher actually is Google Search, the way they've, they've developed Google now. Yeah. Uh, but you do need to download the APKs, put them in. Uh, some of them do need to have the Play Store 
4.0 services, which you need to download that one to be able to work as well. Like I think Keep and Search need that. Uh, the other issue I've had was with Search. If you install Search, for some reason, when it, it would crash, when I would, I mean, it looked like it would open fine. Like you'd get Google Now and you'd get all the cards, but if you went to search for something, it would crash on giving you results. And the problem with that was that for some reason there's an error with a U.S. English dictionary. So change the dictionary or your language to uh, to like um, English generic or English UK. Do a search result, get your results, and then switch it back to English US, and it works fine. And if you That's reboot your phone, you have to just to play with some APKs. <laughs> and you have to reboot when you, re when you re reboot your phone. You have to reset that too, right? So, yeah. But the, the, the fix the fix requires root though. The fix you can you have to push a new <laughs> library file. No, to no, you don't need to. You don't need to push that library file. Um, then you don't have to. Then you won't have that crashing problem though. You don't have to keep. No, 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 I had the crashing problem even if. I pushed that new library. The library yeah. file the guy's talking about was the fact that it was uh, initialization for uh, Google au or audio searching or, or whatever it was. But I pushed that library file and it still crashed. I took it out, changed the language, and it works just fine for me without. Then again, check. Uh, go ahead and take a look at it and see what you guys think. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'm, I just want to give a thanks to uh, Terry Cameron. He's been sharing a couple links with me to help get the APK. So uh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hearing there's, there are some issues apparently with the chat, so good to hear some people are getting into that, that chat room and some people aren't, but uh, keep giving it a try. I mean, I like to have the conversation going there. Okay, uh, but yeah, Google, uh, Android 4.4 and the Nexus 5, and absolutely a huge bunch of stuff. I'm looking forward to getting 4.4 on my device, you know, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, maybe... Maybe even later than that. Who knows? Maybe it'll be weeks later, depending on how soon they give me my vanity URL. I'm waiting that kind of timeline. <laughs> he but, is uh, not bitter. Not, not at all. In the least. But a bunch of stuff. So check our articles. We have a few articles in there talking about it. Uh, we'll see when each of the device gets it. And you know, let us know. Have you tried the, you know, the custom ROMs on 4.4 yourself? Let us know. Moving along. Because again, we could just be here all day talking just on this topic. Is the Motorola Project Aura era, whatever it is. If you remember a few weeks back, we talked about the phone blocks and the idea that, oh, look at these cool device. I can add these different features. Uh, what if I want a different storage or what if I want a different camera? Uh, phone blocks came out. Well, it turns out Motorola had been using or been working on this project called Project Era for over a year now of the same idea. So you would have what they call an endoskeleton or an endo that had all these little plugs and you just slide in the modules that you want to have. You want an 8 megapixel camera? Boom, pop it in. You want a 13? Take that up, pop it in. You know, so depending on what the kind of modules you'd have. So they were um, talking with the phone block people and saying that they're coming out with this. So let's see what happens. I mean, I don't know what you guys think. Uh, I mean, it brings me back to the days of when you would just buy a case and you would put in your own CPU and do this video card, and I'll put in that you know feature. I, you built your own device the way you wanted to. Cass, your your thoughts? Well, I know that Tom and I were joking or like just before that the only fear I would have is you would really have to have a case for this because if you ever dropped it, you could not recover. Like you'd have everything all over the place potentially. I'm sure they have things sort of stuck together. But I just remember dropping like my HTC Dual on the way to work and having to get the case and the stylus and the and the battery and the rest of my phone. And it would go, everything it would, would go like a Lego really thing. Great. Yeah. Like, like you drop a Lego thing right now and everything goes flying. No, and like there are people who are talking about how how ugly this Motorola Aero kind of looks. These little, these little modules, but you know there'll be a case you could probably put over the back of it. There'll be something. I'm I'm just curious, like what happens if I want to get if it, you buy a a five inch screen, and what if I want to go to five and a half inch screen? Do I have to buy a new endo, or will this screen bulk out in the edge, or or whatever? I I don't know. I mean, I'm interested to see what happens. The problem that's going to happen is that it's going to take a while to come out. When the first models come out, it's going to be expensive, and unless they have a lot of people for you know supporting different modules. The customization might, might be pretty limited, so who knows? 
All right, keep moving it on. So speaking of customization, I think when we talked about customization being sort of the leading factor for what Android is famous for, Android is now not just famous. They are dominating globally the market. They now have 80% of the global smartphone sales. Like 80%. I, I, when I bought my first device, I thought it was cool. I, I knew it was, it was a winning device, but did I ever think it would be 80%? Like, that's crazy. Uh, and then we look at the platform distribution right now. Um, like Android releases every once a month. 52% of the people who have Android devices are on Jelly Bean, 4.1 or greater. If you include Ice Cream Sandwich, that's now uh, almost 75% of the people. So this whole idea of fragmentation is getting less and less and less, which is funny because people keep you know, adhering to fragmentation is the only reason they're not developing on it, like Nike. And you know, wow. they're, one of their board of directors is saying, well, we're not going to develop for Android because it's fragmented. Oh, because Apple pays us too much not to. Well, because or because, or because um, Tim Cook is on the board of directors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't need a tin foil tin foil hat for that one. <laughs> I can still get it though, can't I? <laughs> I'll make you a special one. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, Tom, you had a comment. Yeah, I mean, uh, Android fragmentation is a bit of a problem, but as you said, it's getting a lot better as time goes on. And, yeah, I mean, you know, two years ago, you know, I'm on the bus, I'm looking around, all you see is Apple symbols everywhere. It's all you saw. And now I go on the and, uh, on the bus, sorry, and I see Android phones. There's no more Apples. But the thing is, Android comes in so many different colors and flavors that you can tell, like, I can tell what phone it is just by seeing a flash of the back, where the camera placement is, uh, where the headphone jack is, just the shape of the phone. I, April laughs at me because I go, oh, that's a Galaxy S3. Oh, that's a Note. Oh, that's an Acer Liquid MT. And she's just like, oh. you know, it does a whole rolling eyes thing. But the thing is, it's all Android. I mean, everyone on there shares the Android community. Even though they don't talk to each other, they have their headphones and they're ignoring. Android's getting huge. And Ryan said this earlier, when you have a problem, you say, hey, my Android's acting funny. How do I fix this? There's a flood of people saying, oh, do this, 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 this. And before you know it, you have so many people trying to help you who just don't care about money or fame. They just the Android community coming together. And I think it's great. And uh, I think with the new 4.4 coming out with a lot of extra features, I I'm so happy with Android. I, I can't see myself using anything else. No. For now. <laughs> For now. You never know. You know, once it reaches that, that critical mass number, who never knows? We, yep. We've talked Cass about the cycle. Is, uh, Cass's uh, precious Samsung is going to uh, pull the wool over people's eyes and go, oh, I have the, uh, the Android Galaxy S6. Well, no, it's just Galaxy S6. It's no longer Android. I mean, it, it's 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 going to get there. You watch. <laughs> Running time. <laughs> <laughs> running time. That's six more untied. I will not be holding my breath. <laughs> Anyhow. I'm just waiting for the Google Now smartwatch. Yes. yes. Oh, Actually, that yes. Android smartwatch, the smartwatch by Android. Yeah. Pretty interesting. That's pretty much it. I, I'm, I'm very curious. Because yeah. it looked like they did a little video where she was the kid was talking into the watch. So I'm wondering whether they will have that actually answer your phone for you, like oh. that Bluetooth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that would that would just bring it back to the whole idea of the Dick Tracy watch, which, yep. you know, if you're old enough from her, Dick Tracy. I don't, uh, or Madonna I don't, and Dick I, Tracy. I, I don't it's want that. I just want to use that Bluetooth It's possible with the Galaxy Gear, so it's up to the Google just to make it more generic. I don't want to do that. I just want to talk with my Bluetooth headsets and use it just to, 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 to control my phone, to answer calls or whatever. Uh, you know I, what I want? Mark. I want to be able to look into my watch and go play music by Usher, and then Google Music will start working in Canada. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, uh, he said the right word. He said Usher, therefore... Bring, it's say, bring Google Music to Canada. Bing. Bing. Oh, it's just, just announced. Google Music in Canada. Oh, it works. I like that VMO commercial. I, found. Um, I was actually watching a couple of reviews on the Nexus 4, and this I can't remember the guy's name now. And he, and he opens up Google Now. He goes, Google Now, turn off my Wi-Fi. 
and then a little card slides out says, sorry, this option is not supported. Usually when something's not supported, it'll just search for that in Google search. But because a card came out and says this action is not supported, meaning Google thought about it. You yeah. know, they, they had some code there saying this might be an action later. Well, that might that's, be that's been in for a while now. They, they, they've tracked the yeah. But just imagine there's still so much room to grow, and I, I'm waiting. Well, and I, I'm, you know. Talk this up to, a, to an interesting off, observation, but apparently the sound Google sound search is now available in Canada. Yeah, it is. I saw it. So, I, I, so the question is, does that mean they're starting to get licensing things in place to bring Google Music in Canada? I sure hope so, man. But I thought um, I had heard that the sound search was gone in 4.4. 4. Sound or search? Maybe it's integrated into Google now. I heard that it was now gone. Like, oh, no, the listen part, What that's like... Uh, the microphone sound recorder? No. No. The one where you say, what's this song? And it... Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> what's this I can't even remember. What, like Shazam, but I don't have Shazam. But, you know, yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. I oh, I got it. This on action. Okay, I'm using the new Google Now option, and it's right now saying action not supported in your country. Yeah, the old one. Oh, okay. Is, but this is the one out of the 4.4, and it's saying not supported in my country. So I'm assuming then that it is still in there. What do you say? What's, what's this that song? song? What's that? What am I listening? You know, what am I listening to? Or what am I listening to? Oh no, yeah, right now. actually not supported in the country. Um, yeah. What I thought Cass was talking about, I heard this was removed. Uh, in the earlier Nexuses, there's actually a microphone, and it's actually just a generic recorder. You were like oh. make a voice memo. I think that has been removed. If I didn't, if I understand correctly. That was in Google Now. No, that was part of just the Android OS in general. Um, no, it wasn't, year. because I remember looking and looking and looking for something that does that. <laughs> if that I, was, I'm almost kicking all myself. Almost have had that. And then the I, don't have it in my, I don't have my Nexus 4. There's no sound. Yeah, like I've had that on my phones, but my phones have not been Nexuses. And when I got a Nexus and it wasn't there, that's one of the things that took me back out of the Nexus ecosystem. I remember all my phones having it, and I always remember freezing it with titanium backup. But now I'm looking, it's, it's actually not here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll yeah, refreeze it again. Who knows? Okay. Uh, anyway. Let's move it along here. <laughs> La last bit of news before we move on here is just a, um, a while ago I reviewed the LG G2, which was, we kind of know is kind of the sister phone to the Nexus 5. Uh, LG, I'm just going to share my screen for you guys right now, is coming across Canada. So if you haven't had a chance to view uh, the LG G2 yet, Look on the website, the Facebook page for LG Canada, and they have a listing of towns where they're going to go to. So in Thunder Bay, we're technically considered the West Coast. Uh, they're going to be there November 5th, so this Tuesday and Wednesday at Lincoln University, and they're going to be at the Inner City Shopping Center. Um, East Coast, what about you guys? Apparently not going anywhere near. We're not in the East. I don't know, that's why I'm like, sorry. The uh, West Coast of what? There we go. Well, they already were in BC, so you guys missed out on that. But, yeah. Thanks for right. telling us. <laughs> but hey, not timely. There's still plenty of dates that are out there, so people who are in the East uh, part of Canada, you guys can still get a chance to go and view this device. It is pretty flippin' awesome if you haven't had a chance to play around with it. So go take a look. Maybe you can play with it and see what you like it. See if it might lead you towards the fact that uh, you might like the Nexus 5. Who knows? Okay, uh, more topics. Let's go on to reviews. When I put reviews right now. There is uh, last week Martin talked about the next the Note 3 and his glider gloves. Those reviews are up on the site. Um, updates this past week. So obviously, you know, 4.4 is coming out. So there is a various bunch of AOSP. Uh, images people have taken and then tried to convert over for their devices. Uh, I think, Mark, you've got it working on your Nexus uh, 7, or Nexus yeah, 7 right now? Uh, the, the 2012 Nexus 7 I got it working on. Yeah, so there's some people that have it working on the Nexus 4. There's the Galaxy Nexus versions out there. So it's coming out not official. Uh, Mark already talked about the different devices that are going to be getting 4.4 on the timelines. Uh, I've heard about leaks right now for the 4.3. 
for the Galaxy S3, Galaxy S4. So look for those to become official soon-ish. App updates. Uh, a crap load here, and I'm just going to try to get through them all. Uh, NFC Tasks, which is one of my favorite apps, is now called Triggers. So it's just called NFC Tasks. Facebook now has TV shows, if you work in the States, that to reminds you when your TV shows is going to be on. Snapseed has an awesome new HDR escape and plus some other uh, optimizations. Twitter has a timeline improvements. Cronus, better place finder. eBay has bigger pictures when you search. Uh, Google Earth, now you can see your geotag G plus photos. Endomondo, you can now tag your workouts with like sweaty days or you know windy days or something like that, or whatever you want to tag your workouts with. Everything's better uh, with tags. Everything's better with tags. I mean, if Facebook went to tags, everything's got to go with tags, right? Uh, Facebook page manager is now smaller, faster. Uh, Angry Birds Star Wars 2 has more secret levels and some new characters, but I can't figure out how to unlock those characters. I haven't figured that out Buy yet. something. Probably. Tap Talk now has profile editing. We can change your password, change your profile picture, etc. within the, in the app. Ingress is no longer a closed beta, so if you want to join Ingress, just go ahead and play now. Download the app and play. Do you think you would be able to catch up, though? Oh, yeah. Aren't, aren't a lot of those things so high in the... Like, they've already been captured back and forth so much that you yeah. would need more... Yeah. Like, like, level 1 million, like, portals. Yeah, like, I just can't see jumping in now. Uh, I, I still one. think you could. I mean, it depends on the, on the area you are in. There's a lot of people out there that are playing that uh, will help newbies along or... They this have is, certain areas that are, you know. This I mean, has kind of always been my concern, though, is because it's like you have, um, you you have this open beta and then or this closed beta at first, which allows a lot of people to get high level. And then I'm wondering, or are they going to just wipe everyone clean and everyone's going to start at the beginning? They, no, no, everyone's going to maintain their levels when they open it up. And it's like, and all the the you know all the portals are still going to be there. And I'm like, isn't that kind of not fair though? Because then these guys now have a huge lead over the people who are going to come in. And maybe those people aren't going to come in because then it's going to be too much work to try and compete. Like I don't use it because every like I, I'm 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 just barely level two, and there's a million like high level portals around me that I can't even touch anymore. So I just don't bother. Yeah, I mean it's it's possible. I mean I look at it that there's a lot of like people that are, are willing to help out the newbie. And like really, if you if you really want to get leveled up, it doesn't really take that much. I mean, it takes maybe an hour every time to get leveled up. You know, from level one to level two. You know, I, I, I have a, a friend I took out, and within an afternoon, he was at, like, level 5. So, I mean, it can happen, but, again, it's, it's if you want to play the game. The problem with the game, I, and the overall thing, is the fact you, you really have to stay in the game to keep going in the game. So if you're just going to be passive with the game, don't bother. You know, especially go downtown Toronto, everything's level 7, and, you know, you're just going to die in seconds. So, uh, Tom, you had a comment about Ingress? Yeah, um, I, I tend to agree with Mark a little bit, um, saying that for new players, in my mind, it would just seem it would be an uphill battle. You know, I, I don't want to play a game just to rely on stronger players to hold my hand and carry me through. You know, you kind of want to be on an equal standing ground. Uh, I've been talking to again Terry Cameron for the duration of this hangout, and he said that new players have been joining all the time. Shouldn't be a huge problem. He says experienced uh, users help out people all the time, and he says even iOS, Apple devices, are going to get ingress later next year is what he heard. So that will really, really bring more people to the game. I think what would have to do is you'd have to kind of build parties and kind of go around with a few people and kind of work together as a team to really get yourself going. Um, for me, I just I didn't find it logical for myself. It was a time waster, and I just simply don't have that kind of time to really spend going around, especially as a non-driver. Hopping on a bus, walking, it just it doesn't work for me. Yeah. Anyways, that being said, don't friggin' drive and capture portals. You're going to kill me one day. I'll be walking, and I'll be under your car, and then you won't realize until you're, I'm like 20 feet behind you. So, anyways, uh, yeah, portals Cass, right underneath. Cass, I can't find him. <laughs> Cass, that's the next comment. I think we all have a comment yeah. on this. Is it going ahead, Cass? I think the only way this could really be fair is if they put out a bunch of new portals at the same time as they like as they open in waves that they open new portals that will give the well not not only give new users an op chance but like for me I had an invite I didn't bother because 
gosh, there the closest portal to me is 200 kilometers away. You know, if you're going to do this, you have to blanket more areas. If nobody does those portals, well, then maybe someone driving through will do them. But to me, that's the only way you could really grow it, considering how many people were in the closed beta, but would the be to put out new stuff. The only thing, too, to t cast, and the, the, there's an onus on the people that get the invite early to populate. Oh, game. yeah. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I've, I've gone and I've, I think I've made, I've submitted almost 200 portals, and then that's what's sort of the fact that Thunderbay has a lot right now, because, you know, there's a couple of us that have put out brand new portals, and you know what, and the, the turnaround time is getting better to submit them, so we go around and, sure enough, and I've had a lot of people say, I don't play because there's no portals near me. Well, go and submit, and you never know. Like, you Well, know, that's only one reason why I don't play. It's not my type of game. I'm just saying that if they're going to widen the audience, then they should have, rather than just putting out new portals as they're submitted, maybe they should hold it and have a bunch of new portals available whenever they want to do a push for new Well, new Google players. doesn't know which, which should be portals and which aren't. They knew the post offices, the libraries, those things, but they don't know where the public works of arts are. That's what the, the player's job is for. Anyways, uh, Mark, get a comment. Yeah, um, the, I think part of, like, the actual problem is, and I think the, the mentality like, like you just mentioned, is that if you don't have time to, or if, you don't, if you're going to be passive about it, then you shouldn't even really be playing. And I'm like, well, that's that's the issue. That, that, that's that's the, the thing that game developers are kind of fighting with with these um, multiplayer kind of games. Is you have to allow people who are casual players to actually interact. And you know, like I'm a casual player. I, I don't have time to go and run around and do it seriously. But you know, when I do get a little bit, like a few minutes here or there to do it, I, I find myself I can't do anything in in there. So it's 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 uh, that's part of the problem. Is it needs to be something where where it can be, it, it, it should reward the people who are hardcore players, but it should also allow it to still be inclusive for casual players. And, and if you remember early days in Ingress, there was a ton of people making suggestions going through now, whether they went through or not, who knows. Anyways, uh, moving along, uh, let's take a look at the tip of the week this week. And this is something I found out, I actually used this past week. Um, I, was, I always forget which ink it is I'm going to buy. So I go out to the store and I go to the you know staple and I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot to write down. Now I've done a smart thing. I took a picture of my printer a long time ago. I took a picture of the the, the ink and I have to go find through my my Google Drive or you know go search through it and see if I can find it. You know, see if I can find a Canon printer. Which one is it? And I have to go find it. Well, there's a faster way I kind of thought up that if I went into my Google Cloud Print and I want to say to print something, to practice to print something, it would say, which printer do you want to use? And it would list all my printers off, and I could see automatically it's a Canon MG5200. So I then I know, okay, that's Canon, that's that. I don't have to go searching for the, searching through Google Drive or my Evernote or Keep or whatever it is, might have a tag. Uh, I just load up Cloud Print, load, or go to practice, pretend to print something, and it'll ask you what printer do you want to print to, and you just pick. And that was a pretty nice way because... I don't know about you guys. Can you guys tell me the exact model of your printer off the top of your head right now? Um, so uh, Canon 620. Jesus. <laughs> That's a tough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd. I, I, I can tell I, you the ink cartridges I use, too. I know mine have <laughs> two digits. <laughs> I, I use, the thing is, Canon has so many different kinds. I, I, yeah. I can never remember. And I've had several different printers over the years. and I mean, I... I I wrote the article up, and I'm like, oh, and I, as soon as I finished writing the article, I was on my phone at the time. I even forgot what kind of printer ink I was going to buy, so I had to relook it up on the phone and pick it off of the shelf. So, anyways, I thought it was a good idea. If you guys, uh, if you forget what kind of you like me, you have terrible memory for the small insignificant things. Uh, go take a look at CloudPrint. It's a great way. I mean, it's a great app, anyways. We hear it's going to be built, baked into. Uh, uh, 4.4 anyways, but it's a good way to help you know remember what printer it is you need to buy ink for. Okay, so that being said, let's move into the App Coliseum portion. So App Coliseum, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is our chance to show off to you some apps that we've been playing around with. So last week, let's see if I can find this here. We guys had some apps to show off, and they were... Mark showed off Indigo... So I want to go shopping for your books. The Indigo app is now was updated and has a fantastic new look. 
Martin showed off Polar Bear app, a private beta app. Basically, lets you post to Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook, etc., all at once. Uh, and Tom showed off the Chromecast app, which, as we know, is now available to Canadians, even though the Chromecast itself isn't available in Canada. So the winner was of last week. Let's see if I can find this. Can I even list them all off? App Coliseum Mix. Okay, so every week we do we post these things on Google Plus and Twitter, etc. And you guys plus one the ones that you think you liked. Um, let's take a look here. So links. The winner is well, oh, Tom by a fair margin there. Chromecast. I think I only won because uh, a very like in-depth conversa conversation sparked. So therefore, people kept commenting. Therefore, kept bumping my post to the top, and uh, got a lot of exposure. There you go. So, but then it's a great app. I mean, Chromecast, I think, is going to change the way we think about using a TV device. I mean, uh, my Google TV is finally starting to show signs of its age that I want to get rid of it, and I'm like, well, maybe I just get rid of it and only use the Chromecast. Who knows? Tom, comment. Yeah, um, just speaking on Chromecast, um, this uh, kind of related topic, um, the Canadian Netflix is getting really, really, really good recently. They just released uh, Doctor Who for the Canadians, uh, seasons 1, 2, 7, and 7 just finished not long ago, and the fact that Canada got it pretty quick. We're getting a lot of new movies, and almost like we're catching up to the States. I find myself almost not even using my Unblock Us little tunnel anymore because I don't need to. So Canadian Netflix is on the up and up. You guys really should check it out. So, uh, uh, Mark, you got something? Yeah, I, I can't do it until they have the very hungry caterpillar on Canadian Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things. Like, uh, like I had my, my, my boss was uh, talking to me uh, last week because I guess he was he was down in the U.S. or whatever. And he said that he, he came to my desk and he's like, so yeah, I was down in, in the Best Buy and I picked up they have this Chromecast thing and I picked up for thirty five bucks and I and I put it on my TV and I just send stuff from my phone to it and he's like it's really cool and I'm like yeah yeah and, you know it's not it's in yes and it's like wow people are actually not not just within the 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 tech circle but actually other people outside are actually starting to re realize it or notice it and and it's what's nice about it is the fact that it's 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 not Android specific right you can use an iOS device. Yeah. Use it, right? Oh, he has a Galaxy S4, so. Oh, well, he's one of those guys. Good taste. <laughs> what, you mean the majority of, of, of Android users? <laughs> yeah, even kids in my high, high schools I've taught at Adam, so it's crazy. Right, anyways, okay, so let's take a look at this week's app Coliseum. Let's take a look, seeing as Tom won last week. Tom, you get to lead up this week. All right, so I'm going to do mine the old fashioned way, and I'm just going to share my screen. So my pick uh, this week is going to be Plants vs. Zombies 2. Uh, unlike the first one, uh, it's free. So I would label it almost as a freemium game, and what that means is the game is free for anyone to pick up and just start using. But uh, there are a couple of things in here that will ask you to pay money, like if you want a special plant, they'll ask you to pay a little bit of money. If you want... Uh, earn coins faster, a little bit of money, but it's not required. You don't have to. There's no wall that's going to stop you from uh, you know, getting past the game. It just means you're going to have to work a little harder. Um, it's such a great game. It's so much fun. Um, I know I made a review of it saying it was a bit stale, that they kind of reused a lot of the old stuff, and they did. But the fact that you can travel around to new worlds and stuff, and uh, oh, actually not worlds, but uh, points in time, so you go back to the Egyptians, you go back to like pirates and stuff like that. And it's just, it's a rehash of the old one, but it's free. And it's hard to say no to a free game of this kind of caliber. So, I mean, everyone knows what Plants vs. Zombies is. I'm not going to get too much into it, but if you want a free game, play with your kids on your little Nexus or whatever, you should really check it out. It's so much fun. So that's my pick, Plants vs. Zombies 2. Okay, so that's Tom's. Plants vs. Zombies 2. Um, and I think you did, you did an article review on that a little while ago, too, didn't you, Tom? I did. I yeah. will link it. Okay, so, um, so that's Plants vs. Zombie 2. Who's next in the list? Let's go up uh, be me. Okay, so I'm going to show off 
And I'm hoping the barbecue screen here is it's kind of giving me an issue today, and I don't know if this is going to work out. No, it's not. Uh, my app I want to show off today is called Snapseed. So if you missed the Google Play Google Plus event the other day, you missed out some some huge announcements. One of the biggest things lately is the fact that it can do the uh, HDR scape, which is it's fantastic. And if you guys have seen me on Google Plus, I've put a couple of pictures a while ago. I did with some you know bottles here or there. We're just it's a fantastic it's a really nice intuitive um, inter, you know interface where you 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 pick your photo and you can you put it in there and you can pick a bunch of different uh, you know filters or editing features I find a picture here so you pick what different kind of editing features you want to do uh, crop it or just really super simple selective adjust so you can selectively adjust you know this area here and blur it out and actually it semi uh, intuitively knows to to block out the person and just use the background, or to put it on her face, it would use just the person's face, and you can do blur or different features, brightness, and uh, really cool ways. I'm mean, like I'm not super creative when it comes to like stuff like Photoshop, but this makes it super easy to do, and it actually has way better sort of um, uh, features that on it this time than it has, and you know better than let's say like an Instagram where you just apply the filter and that's it. This lets you adjust the strength of each of the ones. Um, and basically, it's led very heavily into what we're going to see in the 4.4 photo editor, which will actually give you better controls. Uh, it's really neat. Go get a try. I, I keep recommending this to everybody who, who's looking for some sort of photo app that Snapseed is it. Go take a look at it. So I'll post that in a second. So uh, that's mine. Mark, you want to go yours? Sure. So um, I have, I'm having no problems with the barbecue screen for me, so I'll use that one. In fact, I had to just root my phone just now, so or my tablet just now. So uh, I'll do the screen share here. Okay, so um, the app that I'm going to do is uh, is a is a news app, and I normally I'm not a huge fan. Like I've tried all the news apps, but I never really get um, never really use them that much or stay with them, and I end up uninstalling them a lot. But this one is a little bit different. This one actually. Um, uh, I've actually been able to use it more just because it's, it gives me stuff that I can easier easily uh, chomp through. So this one's called Circa. Uh, pop it open here. So Circa is basically it's a um, it's a news aggregator. So it'll pull different news and it'll take snippets and everything. So uh, it's designed it follows the design guidelines. So a drag to the drag will bring out all these different and there's a few stories and what they do different topics and what they do is they actually have people who um, who will uh, pull pull stuff together and they'll they'll send it to you. So, like for example, if you're interested in this article, what it'll do is it'll it'll go through and and as you can see, it actually has the, the these subheads and little snippets from different articles it'll take. So you can just go through some of the important points in the article. Um, and then if you want to know actually where they all come from, you can go to the information. It shows you the sources. You can read them at where the sources are if you want. Uh, if you're interested in a topic, you can hit follow, and then you can actually follow that topic, and then you go down to here. There's followed, and what will happen is it'll actually will give you um, give you updates. Uh, so when there's new information that gets that gets shown, it'll push it to you, and you can have in your notifications. You can have the notification settings on. So if I go into settings, um, where is it? But yeah, so there's push notifications up here. So you can have uh, push notifications for update, follow updates, for breaking news and other updates, and so that'll just it'll push in the in, the, in your notification bar. It'll just push um, push any updates or that to that story, which is actually really useful. Actually, I was I was following the the whole um, the the LAX shooting from that one, and it would pop in, and then you know it'd be a little news article that says, "Oh, the guy's been you know named and everything." So it's what it's actually really neat in how they do it, and it's for someone who. Who doesn't really um, who has trouble going through all these news articles? It gives you them nice little snippets that you can go in depth if you want to, but it can also um, give you updates when you, when you need it. And it also has one of these widgets too for your home screen. So that's my app. Cool. All right, so now on to last, but definitely not least, Cass. 
What is your app call this week? My app, and I'm going to do a screen share, is Papa John's Pizza. And uh, I have to say that I was not a big pizza purchaser for a while, but somebody said they were good. They just came to town, and then I looked up their app, and it is really great, <laughs> I have to say. A lot of times when you have a U.S.-based app, um, it doesn't seem to work that well in Canada, but these guys have it figured out. So you can see that there is just the, they have their delivery and carryout, um, they have their special offers, and all you do is is uh, pick your pick your pizza. We get different specials, and then you put your order in, and con and you can either get it later or get it within 15 minutes. And what they do is they send you an email to confirm it. You do have to make a an account, but you don't have to supply a credit card. You can just pay cash or pay credit when you get there. So, and you can even make your own pizzas, like select your toppings and stuff like that, rather than just going with whatever special offers they have. You can choose from their full menu. And we find their prices are actually pretty reasonable. You know, we spent, I think, $30 last night on two medium pizzas and a dessert pizza, and the two pizzas were, were five, five topping pizzas. So, and they're not greasy like Domino Pizza or Pizza Hut pizzas, and they're not really stuffed with cheese and fat like Domino Pizzas. So, kind of like them. And I like being able to just go online and send the order and then being able to pick up rather than trying to find a phone and blah blah. So that's my app, that Papa John's Pizza. Very cool. So let's do a, a recap here. Cass has Papa John's Pizza, which is I think is a cool idea being able to to you know order things online from your phone. Like you say, it's a lot of people you know you memorize the pizza place you always order from. This even makes it even easier to go, you know, not seven six seven eight forty eight. It's half that. Click. And Click. it is actually seamless with the web browser. So if you make orders, it stays in your account. You can check them later as saves or whatever. So there you go. Cool. Uh, Mark has Circa, a nice little news reader app that will give you notifications on news bits you are following. I have Snapseed, so a great little photo editor. So if you want to really make your images pop. And Tom has Plants vs. Zombies, so if you've got time to kill and you hate zombies, go ahead and play that. So, all right, so uh, that's the show, guys. Uh, what we're going to do is now do an off-air portion for those of you guys who can hang around. And uh, So stick around. Maybe we'll talk about some more stuff about Nexus 5. I mean, there's just so much we can talk about Nexus 5 and Android KitKat 4.4 that, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting... I know a lot of us are sitting there waiting for 4.4 whenever our devices are going to get it. So, uh, hope you guys stick around, and uh, we'll see you next week for number 54 on November the 10th. Okay. Oh, do you want to say good night, buddy? Oh, my son's here. He's going to say, Dean, what's your favorite app? Oh, now he's gone. Good night, okay. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so everybody, uh, ciao. So we'll see you next week. Do we want to sign off? Huh? Want to say, good, say goodbye? Well, I'll say goodnight then. <laughs> so as my little, uh, my little uh, thing I did a while ago from our world of Android, thanks for joining us here in the Coliseum. Have a good day. See you later from the snowy north. Uh, Boo. Well, thanks for stopping by this um, beautiful Sunday afternoon, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Sunday afternoon, time for another coffee. All right, see you guys. Yeah. We'll be off. And bro.